Hello everyone, uh, we're two minutes early. We've started uh, our broadcast already, but we'll just wait for two more, uh, two more minutes for everybody else to join us before we officially start. So I'm just keeping you posted. Sure. sure. Hello everyone and uh, welcome to episode three of Urban Log. On behalf of the Urban Log team, we wish you all a very happy Bicycle Day. This year, we celebrate World Bicycle Day in typical Urban Log fashion with a dialogue. A dialogue on the role of cycling in battling the ongoing health and economic crisis and how we can make Indian cities safe for cycling. We had over thousand registrations once again and many questions sent in by you at the time of registration. We hope to answer them, answer some of them in today's episode. On this note, a few housekeeping rules for participants and panelists keep in the chat and chat with each other in the chat box throughout the discussion. Type your questions, however, in the QA box. Our team will shortlist these questions for the QA session. And finally, if you like a question, you can also upvote it to bring them to our attention. I'd like now to introduce our moderator and speaker for this episode, Ms. Ashwati Dilli. She is the Senior Program Manager for ITDP India Program, leading the complete street strategy, policy, and project work for the organization. She has been working with the national, state, and city governments, providing technical assistance on several urban mobility initiatives, including promoting walking and cycling in Indian cities. Over to you, Ashwati. Thank you, Archana. Good afternoon, everyone. Over the last few months, we have been hearing success stories from across the world, from Paris to Mexico City to Auckland, on how the humble cycle has enabled citizens across the world to move safely, especially during this health crisis. On the World Cycle Day, I would like to ask each one of you how can we ensure that this decade is the golden decade for cycling for our Indian cities? To discuss this and to learn from each other on how we can create an environment where cycling can thrive, I'm delighted to welcome each one of you to the third session of Urban Log, Cycling, a Green Means to COVID Recovery. Once again, thank you so much for your overwhelming response for our first and second sessions of Urban Log. And today, we have a surprise for you. A message from our Honorable Minister, Mr. Hardeep Singh Puri, Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, Government of India. To ensure that no one misses out on the inspiring remarks from our Honorable Minister, I'm going to pause for a couple of seconds to remind you that you can actually message your friends, families, or colleagues to join this particular webinar. If you have any trouble logging on to Zoom, we are live on Facebook too. Before we start, I'd like to express our immense gratitude to the Smart Cities mission, particularly Mr. Kunal Kumar, Mr. Rahul Kapoor, and the entire team who have been engaging with us regularly, guiding and supporting us through this entire program. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank our knowledge partners, World Bank and GIZ Smart SUT. Jumping straight into our agenda, we have a fantastic panel with us today. Mr. Kunal Kumar, um, the Joint Secretary of uh, Smart Cities Mission, Ministry of Housing Urban Affairs, um, will deliver the introductory remarks. As always, we have 
three very quick presentations to set the context. I will speak briefly on what Indian cities can do to embrace a cycling transformation. Next, we have Ms. Antonella Bruzes, the city councillor for urban planning, green and public space from Milan, who will share with us the radical steps taken by Milan to promote cycling. And finally, we have Mr. Satyashankaran, the cycle mayor of Bengaluru, representing the bikes mayors across the country, sharing with us how CSOs can collaborate with city governments to transform cycling in our cities. For the panel discussion, we will be joined by Mr. Bhaskar Rao, the Commissioner of Bengaluru City Police, who has been pioneering cycling transformation in the city, and Ms. Swati Kanna, Senior Sector Specialist, Urban Development and Mobility, KFW, who will share with us the plans that KFW has for promoting cycling in our Indian cities. Thank you once again. So we're going to start uh, today's session uh, with a special message from our Honorable Minister to our participants and the nation. Ashana, can you please play the message? Sure, Ashwati, just give me a minute. The nostalgia of cycling brings forth many cherished memories from our childhood. For many of us, Archana, it was our I first trip to hear. I'm unable to hear. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. I, I think it works. Sorry. I, I will start again, just in case. The nostalgia of cycling brings forth many cherished memories from our childhood. For many of us, it was our first tryst with trial and error as we learned how to balance ourselves whilst enjoying the ride. Today, nearly 20% of urban India commutes using cycling. Cycling provides equal access to jobs, education, recreation, and other everyday activities for all sections of society. For the rich, poor, children, women and others. During the lockdown, many people relied on cycling to access essentials in their neighborhood. As cities reopen and economic activities resume, many people will continue to rely on walking, cycling and public transport as their primary modes of transport to access work and to go about other essential requirements in their daily lives. Cities are reclaiming each space for walking and cycling by building wider footpaths and new cycle tracks. Indian cities can learn from these global best practices as we develop short and long-term strategies to ensure that everyone has safe, affordable and centralized access to work, education and healthcare facilities. The Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs is committed to helping cities develop high quality transportation systems that offer sustainable mobility options to their residents. These systems should reflect the spirit of India's national urban transport policy, which emphasizes the importance of moving people, not vehicles. I urge all the smart cities to work towards achieving this vision of a safe and fun cycling for everyone. The urban dog a webinar series anchored by the Smart Cities mission in collaboration with the India program of the Institute for Transformation and Development Policy has been supporting Indian city officials in developing contextual, sustainable and equitable transportation solutions. I look forward to hearing about the opportunities and approaches to encourage cycling in Indian cities in the episode of this series. On this World Bicycle Day, let's decide to make our cities safe for cyclists. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your uh, inspiring comments. And without keeping uh, any of you waiting, over to you, Kunal, sir. Yeah, good, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just a check on uh, audio. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you are. Okay, I generally keep my video off because Zoom, as I've told you in the past also, 
uh, is not uh, allowed in our offices, so I have to shift to mobile hotspots, which is why I keep the video off. Uh, first of all, uh, a very happy World Bicycle Day to everyone. I don't know how many of us have been able to cycle today. I am certainly thinking of cycling today in the evening, uh, just to you know, uh, you know, just to because I I do it very often, and of course I'll do it today because it's World Bicycle Day. Uh, no, it's. Uh, our cities uh, today are, of course, going through the COVID uh, times. But just think of, you know, just three months back when it was all good and uh, you saw all those traffic snarls and all the problems on the road and the, and the street fight that goes on between various modes of transport. I think fundamentally three words that the minister used in his speech, uh, which is contextual, sustainable, and equitable. Uh, pretty much describe how we should be looking at transport in the future uh, with the kind of uh, concern we have with climate. Uh, it's not only about climate, it's also about our health. It's also about eating fresh, by the way. Cyclists and walkers eat more fresh food because they tend to tend to pick up more things as they go to you know different places. Uh, whereas most other people eat uh, food which is, uh, you know, delivered online and maybe not as fresh. There's so many different things. In fact, walking and cycling uh, have so much to add to the economy. Uh, uh, if you see uh, uh, even investments in cycling infrastructure, for example, they give returns of more than 5.5 times the initial investment. So think of uh, the, in, uh, and generally investing in cycling lanes uh, gives you actually more uh, economic uh, um, output and, and the kind of returns uh, than you investing in roads and flyovers. Uh, so that's the economic side of it. There is a health side of it. There is a climate side of it. Uh, and plus, of course, historically, as the minister also mentioned that, uh, of course, today he said that 20% of India commutes on cycles. But historically, it's been more. And that, and that percentage, I think, has sadly decreased. 30% uh, to 20%. Look, I used to go to a school bicycle, uh, but I haven't sent my own children bicycle because uh, the general problem that people perceive about cycling in cities is that uh, cycling infrastructure is not safe. In fact, the infrastructure is not safe. There pretty much isn't any cycling infrastructure in most cities. And uh, since most smart city CEOs and most, most smart city teams would be tuned in to this uh, webinar, uh, this perception about doing public bicycle sharing uh, is of course fine, but public bicycle sharing is just an add-on, but the basic layer of cycling will only come unless, uh, on, will not come unless we have safety for cyclists. The cyclists should feel at home on the streets, So we're unable to hear you, sir. Am I audible, please? Yes, now you are. So you were just talking oh, about how, you know, cycles need, uh, like cyclists need to feel safe on our streets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so it. cyclists need to feel safe on our streets and, and, and investments into making cycling a safe proposition is very, very important. And uh, it's, it's not only about creating separate cycle lanes. It's about, you know, the proper rules of the game on the road. So a sensitization of the police force, uh, a proper demarcation of lanes, investment into cycling uh, infrastructure, uh, you know, um, also talking to a lot of the industry and a lot of different stakeholders within the city to promote cycling in their own ways uh, by helping employees who actually travel to work uh, or, or maybe for education by cycling approach it, it it has to be a holistic approach it can't be an approach where we just think of an infrastructure that we build and that will be sufficient for promoting cycling so let's look at it systemically let's look at sustainable transport systemically let's not look at it as an, an input driven solution where a technology or an infrastructure will solve the problem it's largely a human problem it's a problem of social consciousness people in the city have to decide to be consciously more climate uh, sensitive as their choices are concerned and who will do this 
smart cities have supposed to be are supposed to be led by leaders who will build these concessions within the city you know and, and so my my request to all is just think i mean this webinar is going to help us shape our ideas post the webinar just think of what all as individuals as leaders of organizations and as leaders of cities you can do to promote cycling in a more systemic manner in your cities and neighborhoods and make the difference that india needs clearly this is the way forward if we can't promote walking and cycling we will lose our cities to pollution and health problems and uh, you know the, the cherished dreams that our country has of economic growth and a better quality of life for everyone will remain dreams forever so uh, i wish everyone again a very happy world bicycle day and uh, i myself make a resolve and i hope everyone will make a resolve to make this day a milestone in the way we think about cycling in this country in the future thank you thank you so much sir for those uh, really inspiring uh, remarks so i'm going to start uh, with the current with the first presentation let me just try sharing my screen can you all see my screen okay so you cannot see my screen actually it was uh, visible earlier if you could uh, share it once again now uh. sure i'm just trying once again you could just choose the right window ashuti uh, right now so i have chosen the right window i don't know why let me just try once again i have your presentation on standby if you want to use it uh do you think we should go with that maybe all right can everybody see my screen now ashwadi can you see my screen yes i can see your screen go for it ashwadi all right so uh firstly thank you to our honorable minister and mr kunal kumar uh, sir for uh, encouraging indian cities to embrace a cycling transformation but you know how can our streets ignite or how can our cities ignite this transformation what are some of the action points that they can and should take before we go into the details i'd like to remind you that 70% of trips in indian cities are by walking cycling and public transportation in fact this picture of the young mother taking her two children to school is an ode to the freedom and independence that cycling provides next slide so why does cycling actually play a very critical role right now in green recovery from covid-19 cycling is a personalized mode of transport that enables physical distancing Cycling is an alternative for short and medium distance trips and can support to reduce the strain on public transport. Cycling is a comparatively um, affordable mode of transportation for large sections of our society. It is a green and zero emission mode of transport. Next slide. How can Indian cities embrace the vision shared by our honorable minister? let us now go into each of these three pillars in details next so cities must create safe and inclusive infrastructure to encourage more people to take up cycling as a primary mode of transportation paris for example is creating 650 kilometers of pop up cycleways across the entire city indian cities should embrace cycle lanes on arterial subarterial and collector streets along existing public transportation networks they can be created by repurposing on street parking space or even carriageway lanes by demarcating them through paint and segregating them using barricades cones or bollards next along with uh, a network for cycle lanes especially since indian cities may lack wide streets cities should ensure slow zones narrow arterial streets should have speed limits below 
30 kilometers per hour if they're being used by cyclists and motorists and simultaneously local and collector streets which are frequented by children and elders in and around our neighborhoods should be converted into slow zones implemented by road closures where through traffic is avoided. Their speeds on these streets should be below 15 kilometers per hour as pedestrians might also share the space uh, with cyclists and motorists. Next, Along with si uh, safe cycle lanes and slow zones, it is important for us to ensure that our cyclists can park their cycles safely at their destinations. This can be done easily by repurposing existing car or two-wheeler parking for cycling on both on-street and off-street. Next, finally, to ensure the comfort of our cyclists, we can explore creative temporary shading elements using fabrics, low-cost sheets, and local materials. If continuous, uh, continuously shaded corridors cannot be created, installations can also be put up at regular intervals of maybe 250 meters to one kilometer. Next. So along with these quick cost-effective measures, cities uh, should ensure long-term change by converting all of these temporary measures into permanent intervention over the year. So let's take a, uh, you know, let me take a second to describe our streets. We have, uh, streets that are that dare you to cycle, the ones that you are able to cycle, and the ones that invite you to cycle. Our aim through this endeavor is to ensure um, and transform our streets that dare our cyclists to cycle to the ones where they will be able to cycle. And uh, in the long term, we should be able to invite all our cycles to uh, cyclists to enjoy their ride riding on our cycle tracks. Cities should create an empty cell in the next slide and implement a city-wide network plan. Cities should ensure that our cycle tracks are not encroached by parked cars by implementing parking management measures and other travel demand measures such as congestion pricing. Cities should take measures to update development control regulations to include shower facilities and off-street cycle parking facilities in buildings. Next, as we create safe and comfortable con um, and convenient infrastructure for all our citizens, it is very important to ensure that our citizens have access to cycles. A preliminary results of uh, survey conducted by um, um, ITDP India across the country suggested that cycling would rise by 40%. So how can we ensure that our citizens have access to cycles? States such as Tamil Nadu, Bihar and Punjab can um, look at expanding free cycle schemes for students to also the vulnerable members of society. Next, as you can see in this particular slide, we should look at re-operationalizing cycle sharing and rental systems in our cities. Next, we should ensure that our cycle sharing systems are regularly sanitized. So as we spoke to uh, one of the operators, Yulu, he mentioned about how cycles are uh, sanitized uh, once every three hours. And this message is also available to citizens on their apps. Next. The previous slide, yeah. So as we are looking at uh, expanding or you know uh, ensuring that our cycle sharing systems are back on track, we need to ensure inclusivity. We need to ensure that it is available, all information is available in the local language. If the app technology is a hurdle for some of our users, we need to ensure how the cycle sharing system can be incorporated with a mobility card. We can also look at weekly and monthly passes, which can even be subsidized by our offices or businesses. Next slide. Studies show, uh, for example, the census results actually show that 30% of households in Tamil Nadu own cycles, yet our mode shares are extremely low. So we, can, uh, we need to look at how we can subsidize cycle maintenance and repairs. For example, France provides 50 euros to uh, its citizens to ensure that they can repair their cycles. Many countries also have mobile cycle vans which come into different neighborhoods to ensure that we can easily repair our cycles. Next. 
For the long-term recommendations to ensure that we have access to cycles for all, we should look at how our cycle sharing system can be expanded to other parts of our city in line with uh, the cycle lanes that we are proposing. We could look at facilitating state-sponsored community cycle sharing schemes such that um, cycle sharing is accessible even to our economically weaker section at an affordable rate. It's very important for us to look at training programs for women, students, and other users who may not know how to cycle. In fact, even the Dutch run cycle clinics uh, to teach women to cycle. Last but not the least, we should also look at promoting cycling to work. Next. While we look at creating this wonderful infrastructure and ensuring that everyone has access to cycle, a very important aspect that we need to focus on is how can we break the stigma around cycling? And this can be done by ensuring that we have a lot of campaigns and events that actually promote cycling, the benefits of cycling, etc. And if we can have champions both inside the government as well as outside who would be championing this cause and on this note, we actually have our cycle mayor from Bangalore speaking about his work coming up soon. Next. So as we look at all of these measures, it's also important for us to look at long-term uh, investments into cycling. And as um, Mr. Kunal Kumar mentioned, investments in cycling infrastructure have returns up to 5.5 times of the initial investment. So we need to look at developing comprehensive investment strategies, look at how we can provide tax incentives on cycles and its spare parts so that the cost of cycle is becomes more affordable to our end users and how we can create employment opportunities in the cycling industry. Next. To sum up, we can achieve our vision by three important features. One, we should, cities should look at how we can create safe and inclusive infrastructure. We need to ensure that all our uh, citizens have access to cycle and we need to look at ways to break the stigma around cycling. Next, years back in the 1970s, Netherlands turned its oil crisis as an opportunity to promote cycling. Today, we refer to cycling as a Dutch culture as cycling has fantastic social and equity benefits, economic opportunities and health benefits. Let's all come together to transform our current crisis into a golden opportunity to promote cycling. Thank you. Next, I think all of you are set to travel very quickly to Milan to know more about the city's ambitious plans to promote cycling. Over to you, Antonella. Thank you very much and uh, thank you for the invitation. I'm very happy to spend with you the World Cycle Day discussing with you about uh, cycling. Uh, I will start to saying that I agree with uh, all the things that have been said uh, till now and in a few minutes I try just to uh, to tell you something about uh, what Milano is doing right now. So I'm going to share my um, my screen and uh, okay tell me uh, if you uh, see the the presentation okay so i can start uh, okay um i try to be short uh, telling you uh, what milano is uh, is saying uh, in this uh, uh, field about uh, uh, cycling and uh, walking i start from uh, some data uh, in Italy, we have uh, 36 million of cars, uh, which is a lot compared to the fact that uh, the population of uh, Italy is uh, about uh, 60 million. Uh, but what is relevant uh, is the, the percentage and the average uh, uh, the, of the cars compared with the, the inhabitants. Uh, in uh, After Rome, Milano is the, the city in Italy that have uh, 50, that has two, uh, 52 cars uh, uh, every 100 uh, uh, inhabitants compared to the average in other uh, European cities like uh, Paris or Berlin, where the, this number is uh, almost uh, the, the half. So this is, uh, of course, a problem and an issue, not only for the circulation of cars, uh, but also for the fact that uh, 
cars are parked 92% uh, uh, of their time. So it means that they are mm, just uh, uh, on the street, uh, occupying streets. Uh, and uh, uh, most of the time uh, that uh, the, the, the drivers uh, spent in their car, uh, not most, uh, but one third, sorry, is spent looking for parking. So it's not uh, uh, only for circulating, but just uh, uh, for uh, uh, looking for uh, park. And uh, uh, it's not that, uh, very efficient, as we know, because on average, again, a car moves uh, in Italy 1.5 people, so it's not an efficient uh, means of transportation. And uh, it has been already said, um, we use our culture, uh, push us to, to, to use cars uh, also for a very short journeys, uh, for uh, three kilometers, uh, five kilometers. There are distances that uh, by car, by bike or walking uh, could be uh, easy to, to, to cover. Uh, some data about, uh, about Milan. Milan is changing uh, a bit in, in, this, uh, in this direction. In 2008, uh, with the previous, previous um, uh, administration, uh, we started to have uh, the bike sharing, uh, uh, and uh, this the the, 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 the culture uh, and the production of uh, bike lanes improve uh, from uh, 2011 and, and 2017. Uh, now we have. Uh, um, almost uh, more than 200 kilometers of uh, bike lanes, which, which are not that much uh, actually compared to the uh, other European cities and also other compared to other also Italian cities. Uh, but uh, um, at the same time, even if the the cars uh, uh, decrease uh, uh, a bit uh, uh, between 2006 and 2016. Uh, we still have uh, 500,000 cars uh, circulating in, in Milan, which are uh, uh, still a lot. Um, what happened in this period, uh, Italy and Milan, as uh, all the world is uh, facing the, the pandemic and the uh, sanitary emergencies, and uh, uh, the, the municipality of Milano uh, prepared uh, several documents uh, called the strategies of adaptation, try to deal with this issue in uh, the, the general issues, uh, but uh, one specific uh, attention is devoted to the, the, the cycle and uh, the uh, in general, the, the mobility, the sustainable mobility. The, um, the, the, the document called Open Streets, uh, Strategies, Action, Tools for Cycling, Walking, etc. Uh, try to, to, uh, to fix uh, some direction uh, in order to uh, deal with uh, the fact that uh, in Milano the traffic is, is unsustainable, uh, basically for congestion, especially in peak times, but also the level of pollution. Uh, Milano and the Po Valle is one of the most polluted area in, uh, uh, in Italy. Uh, and uh, also the, the issue of the occupation of urban space uh, and the fact that the city has a, a limited uh, surface and uh, if public space is used uh, mainly as a parking lot, uh, there is something that uh, uh, it's not working in terms of a hierarchy, in terms of uh, uh, which kind of city do we want. Um, the uh, what happened with the lockdown? Uh, uh, we had, of course, a strong. Uh, our city had a, uh, had a strong push to uh, to do something in a, uh, in a quick time in order to to deal with this uh, um, aspect. Uh, we had uh, uh, experimented a unique condition because in those period uh, we had a, a strong reduction of urban traffic. The absence of noise then uh, was uh, unbelievable. It was very strange for us that are used uh, as many people living in urban uh, see in urban situation in urban uh, condition has in there uh, here and then uh, we had the possibility uh, to to test uh, to test some of the of sol some solution uh, uh, light uh, cheap uh, in order to uh, force a situation and try to understand if they work or not in order to consolidate them afterwards uh, so uh, the, the municipality of Milan, the uh, the, the central, uh, um, the, 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 the 
so the, the municipality, the sector uh, uh, working with mobility, uh, proposed a new emergency cycle path network uh, and another measure, uh, the, the slow zone, uh, CT30, so zone where the uh, areas uh, in which uh, the, the circulation has to be reduced uh, uh, to 30 uh, kilometers per hour. Of course, uh, Milan, as other cities, has uh, uh, um, a, an urban plan for sustainable uh, uh, mobility uh, that try to uh, that uh, put uh, uh, long term uh, strategies, but this is these are just uh, uh, very uh, quick uh, intervention that try to improve uh, uh, the situation because of course uh, uh, the lockdown also push uh, now uh, an important uh, increase of uh, the use of cars. Uh, people don't doesn't trust so much in using public transportation system so we have a problem also of uh, safety and how to uh, make people move uh, in a safe way uh, in order to to, to reach uh, the the services the, the the working places and so on so uh, 35 uh, kilometers of uh, bike lanes uh, to be realized between uh, may and december 2020 uh, of course they are not enough uh, and they are not so uh, it's not that big the number uh, but uh, is a step ahead in uh, in this direction that uh, we consider positive Milano experimented in the, in the last uh, month uh, and years also um, several interventions of the according to the, the so-called um, principle of uh, tactical urbanism and many uh, squares and public spaces have been uh, transformed um, in order to uh, to to uh, improve the, the spaces for a pedestrian uh, to uh, transform the circulation of cars and to give other space and to uh, change somehow the also the culture of public space in Milan and um, I really like the, um, the what has been said you know, the, the, the people uh, and the cyclists but not only uh, should be uh, should feel at home on the street uh, uh, now it has been said at the beginning and I, I really uh, I agree uh, while uh, and the contrary uh, the streets uh, are most of the time uh, uh, intended as the space for cars and uh, that that is definitely not so these are two examples of what has been uh, done uh, in uh, two uh, street two squares and streets of milan so with the idea to you know, to include uh, uh, with uh, um, also means that are uh, light cheap and if they don't work uh, at the end uh, we uh, can be uh, reversible and uh, uh, that's it so the intervention of a cycle path uh, uh, are this one uh, you see a set of uh, intervention uh, milano is a city of one uh, million uh, and half and less than 400 thousand uh, inhabitants so it's uh, definitely smaller compared to the indian cities and uh, in terms of uh, uh, people and in terms of also surface. Uh, these are some uh, intervention that you see. There are still fragmented, but uh, they try to, to work on uh, some specific uh, axes with uh, uh, different kind of uh, strategies uh, um, in terms of uh, um, mainly with road signages so working on uh, just painting in uh, on the street or a, a very uh, small uh, uh, intervention with the idea to um, also um, check the reversibility of uh, the intervention and other interventions are aimed at uh, uh, traffic calming, enlarge the sidewalk, uh, transform the streets into shared streets uh, in order to uh, try to, to keep together um, people, uh, bikes uh, and cars, uh, but uh, with a uh, definitely slow, uh, slow um, speed uh, or a pedestrian street uh, uh, as well. And, uh, 
Of course, uh, all these interventions that are now uh, ongoing uh, has to be done uh, having in the background uh, different work direction that have been already mentioned. Uh, so it is important to work on intermodality on the issue of communication. It is true even in Italy that uh, we need to break this the, to to break the stigma because uh, the the bike uh, bikes is uh, now compared to the car the car culture is uh, uh, in many times is not uh, accepted. Uh, incentives we have also to to make experimentation in order to change rules uh, because uh, there are some rules that uh, make uh, the intervention uh, complicated in terms of bureaucracy, in terms of uh, permission, authorization, and monitoring in order to, uh, to, to, to check how the uh, situation is going. I'm gonna finish my contribution, concluding my contribution, just uh, showing some picture about uh, one of the main axes where uh, this intervention uh, um, is, uh, is, is being realized right now in these days. Uh, Corso Buenos Aires is one of the main axes. Uh, you can see here what has been done, a very light intervention. And uh, what is uh, important is that uh, to, in these days, uh, more than 6,000 uh, bikes uh, cross the street every day. So uh, in a safe way or safer way compared to the past. Um, it, this is uh, a result, but it must be said that there are a lot of conflict in terms of uh, people that do not want uh, the, the cycle path because they th still thinking that uh, car arriving with cars uh, to park in front of their shops uh, would be ben, uh, would be better for their uh, economic activities, and so I think that we must work a lot uh, on the issue of culture of uh, bike, and uh, not only on the uh, issue of uh, uh, safety and uh, safe uh, uh, bike lanes, but also in terms of culture and in terms of uh, uh, make this uh, this uh, means of transportation uh, uh, safe and uh, that's it thank you thank you so much antonella it was fantastic to see all the great work that milan is doing and i'm sure it will inspire hundreds of cities um, in our country to do uh, similar activities as well and now Finally, we are back to our very own Bangalore. Over to you, Satya, who is representing Bikes Mayors from across the country to share some of the fantastic work that they have been engaged in. Thank you, uh, Ashwati. Uh, thanks to ITDP uh, for giving us this opportunity to share the work we've been doing. And thanks to the Smart City Foundation as well for organizing this and uh, uh, providing an opportunity for people to talk about this. Just give me a minute while I share the screen. Sure. Are you able to uh, yes, Satya. see in here? Okay. Yes. So uh, a brief introduction about uh, who the bicycle mayors are. Uh, the organization BYCS in Amsterdam uh, came up with this program of bicycle mayor network across the globe. What it does is it empowers individuals who have been working towards promoting cycling in the cities uh, in the form of a network, providing them with tools and ability to make change happen on the ground. So what Bikes has ended up creating is a bunch of uh, change makers across the globe uh, we have more than 100 bicycle mayors across the globe. I don't know if Milan has one. I need to check. Uh, but we do have more than 100 of them. And even the cities in India have more than 40 bicycle mayors. Um, so what the bicycle mayors do is very interesting. The target that we have is 50 by 30. What is that? It is 50% mode share in cities by 2030. It's an ambitious mode share. A lot of cities across the world are trying to achieve this. They're getting closer. Uh, like the Joint Secretary said, Mr. Kumal, we are, it's, it's actually uh, decreasing in India uh, because of lifestyle and aspirational issues. But we are hitting a point where we need to uh, pull the hand, handbrake and change our trajectory because our national commitments on pollution is also 
uh, something that we have to go after and this this fits in very well with the 50 by uh, 30 uh, so the bicycle mayors are basically change agents who work these are the bicycle mayors in india a lot of cities have it your if your city doesn't have one uh, you should apply to bikes uh, the network effect is uh, very important we share knowledge we share practices we have uh, beautiful programs running uh, throughout the country which assist the government in making sure that the infrastructure that is put up can be used uh, very effectively because outreach uh, as uh, Mr. Kunal pointed out, is a, an integral part, the behaviors and the change that we need to bring about in how we accept cycling as an urban transport form is a very important thing that we uh, bridge. It takes various different shapes of programs. Open streets is a very uh, useful thing. Ashwati, you have pointed out how uh, the uh, ITDP program in Chennai has been doing open streets. We have been doing open streets in various other cities, including Guwahati, Gurugram, and Bengaluru as well. And more are in the pipeline, including tier two cities like Thrissur. A uh, lot of open streets initiatives bring together the neighborhood. It brings a different set of people together and say, if streets are for all, how would you like it? If you were in a car and if you were in a bicycle, how do you bring empathy together? So this is what the open streets events achieved. Throughout Europe and Latin America, this has been uh, an excellent effort. We have to do this here because it is most needed in our congested cities. Uh, cycle to work is a very important contributor because it relates to our economic uh, need. Uh, how can we have our work commutes uh, be replaced as much as possible with a bicycle, if not 100%. You can shoot for a very respectable model share if we make these commutes go on to uh, the bicycle. We have used different approaches to bicycle mares. In Bengaluru, we have tried the technology-based approach. The cycle to work platform has uh, uh, given good dividends. It has converted a lot of people who otherwise would have a choice to use a motor vehicle. In Mumbai, we have tried out the buddy system, which helps people who need help to get a buddy to travel to their work. So they get used to the work location, the, the routes and all of those things. So we have tried the human approach and the technology approach and a mix and a blend of this is going to uh, be useful. The technology based approach also gives us data, which previously was a street side counter. Now we have online counters using tracking tools. Kids are a basic, uh, it's, a, it's a very important part for, of our future. We have grown up with different aspirational goals. The cities of the future uh, is in the hands of these people. How do we inculcate the sense of uh, uh, environment and uh, sustainable city and quality of life. How do we inculcate that in them? How do you inculcate group behavior uh, and solving collective action problems? How do we inculcate those kind of things? So it's it's a very important part. We have tried uh, this in various cities uh, across uh, India uh, very successfully. The bicycle brigade, the sensitization at school level, the walk to school have all produced uh, a double digit number of conversions, literally. Uh, the next step is to work with the government uh, to make sure that it is really safe for them uh, so that we can allow our kids to go uh, across the city. Bicycles during crisis has been an eye-opening thing. It's been, it's been happening only recently, this COVID crisis. Across the world, we have seen uh, bicycles being used in terms in, in during emergencies to, uh, to come out. Even in India, we've started uh, in a, a few cities. We have been able to get out there Help the uh, help during the crisis when migrants providing food, getting them supplies, and uh, getting them different kinds of essentials during the crisis as well. This provided a very good mindset factor that cycles have been useful during uh, this time as well during the emergencies. So what you see is uh, trying to use this position of bicycle mayor and reach to the citizens and approach them with different kinds of campaigns, and then uh, work with the government also and see how do we tie in the infrastructure provisioning and the awareness campaigns together to produce the right set of effect. The scaling program, some of uh, the bicycle mayors, uh, with myself and Guwahati and Mumbai are trying the bicycle counselor program. More bicycle mayors are trying that. We want to scale the leadership at the ward level and tackle the neighborhoods. Uh, it's very important that we scale this awareness building and uh, uh, program to the neighborhood level at the ward level. The junior bicycle mayor creates champions at the school and the college level because the way you communicate to the younger people needs to be about how you make the bicycle cool. So these are the scaling programs we have and we are uh, getting towards that's all aided by a nice back-end team both in Bikes Headquarters in Netherlands and in Bikes India as well. 
so this is the uh, the outcomes are very clear for people to see and i have a message for the uh, smart city people as well uh, we can use technology we can use human touch we have seen that uh, there are results out there the platforms are giving you numbers it can aid you in decision making the numbers are there for all to see if you if we can work together uh, we've seen that in bengaluru uh, with the police commissioner who might share some ideas as to how he's been working with, with me and uh, how we can make this happen there are pressures on the infrastructure but the smart cities uh, uh, need to start allocating disproportionate amount of budget for these kind of things we can't look this in the eye now and say you know this is not this is how much it is going to be we have spent a lot of money on cars for a long time but look at this we are going after 1 crore people of bangalore having a bicycle a bicycle cost less than a cell phone some of them these days uh, not the expensive ones the stuff that is functional cost less than a cell phone we buy cell phones every 2 years we should every house should have one if you think like that look at the population in the big cities that can own bicycles and look at the economy that it can create at an average of uh, uh, 10k a bicycle or whatever it might be so there is an economic uh, imperative there is uh, an infrastructure imperative which the smart cities should help on and prioritize uh, this infrastructure uh, so with this i like to conclude my presentation to say that bikes is here to help make the gaur's job better and get the people to accept bicycling as a mode because that roadblock is what is going to cause a lot of issues not just the infrastructure infrastructure will be enabled i'm sure all the people here in the smart cities also want to build it but we need to show that we are willing to get on it thank you very much thank you so much uh, satya uh, in fact your work actually reminds me of a quote uh, from helen keller she said alone we can do so little but together we can do so much Uh, thank you, Satya, for sharing that. You know how mayors from across the country are coming together to, you know, create this change in our country. It's a great point uh, to start our panel discussion. So I'd like to request uh, the panelists uh, to keep our answers short, and uh, we also want to have an interactive session of uh, question answers from our participants as well. and i am very very delighted uh, to let you all know that we are now also joined by uh, mr parveen pardeshi namaste sir uh, additional chief secretary maharashtra urban development authority uh, so sir uh, we've been having a, a, a quite an interesting conversation today where we were looking at how cities across our country can look uh, initially at very quick and temporary interventions to start with to promote cycling but at the same time look at also how in the longer term this temporary interventions can become permanent so we've been looking at interventions we have been looking at uh, how we can actually break the stigma and uh, promote cycling uh, as a very cool mode of transportation as well and also looking at uh, how is it that we can actually make our cycles accessible accessible to the most vulnerable members of our society so on this note sir i'd like to ask you uh, like start the panel discussion with a question to you sir about what can states what are or what can states do to nudge our cities to take the right action to promoting cycling this particular uh, uh, right now at the time of covid and uh, going ahead as well so over to you sir a uh, uh, really good uh, uh, initiative uh, and uh, uh, you can hear me no i'm yes sir you're very very clear we can yeah, hear okay. you very well thank so, you so no it's a really great initiative that we are talking about cycling in the time of cyclone and uh, uh, covid all the three c's <laughs> so that's uh, important uh, well we all know the general facts that in the type of congested cities uh, with heavy traffic uh, Uh, loads with per hour commute times on private cars have gone down to 15 to 20 kilometers per hour in cities like uh, mumbai cycling even beats private mercedes cars in terms of speed in congested uh, areas uh, you can reach faster your destination within 4 to 5 kilometers in the heart of the uh, city and then you don't have to find your own uh, 
parking space. So that's a wonder. And people don't know this easily. So uh, that's. But on the other hand, uh, because we don't have any traffic ethics for uh, the safety of the cyclists in, uh, in Indian uh, cities. So cycling is indeed, let's not be uh, put that under the carpet, very, very unsafe uh, in terms of the life of the cyclist. So these are the two uh, extreme uh, points that it is a faster mode of transport, surprisingly, uh, the, the, than anything else. But on the other hand, it is uh, uh, a very unsafe mode because of the huge number of private uh, vehicles. Now, we worked a lot. I used to be municipal commissioner Pune, and then after that, of course, Mumbai in both cities, especially in Pune, because I was there for longer, for two years, we worked a lot on having a cycle safe planning, um, uh, uh, the travel plan. Uh, my successes also took that uh, far. The issue about cycling in uh, Indian cities, let's just uh, sort of diagnose the, uh, so who are the surviving cyclists? Let's look at this. Like when we were uh, school going, I still remember till right up to class 12th, which is like junior college now, I used to carry, take my sister on the cycle to a school, which was, it, so it was a standard means. When I joined the IAS, I used to stay at one end of Pune city, which is at Yerouda, I don't know if you know, this is at the absolute Nagar end. And my training institution, which was, uh, Yashada, which is at the Mumbai end. And I could travel within 45 minutes every day. Morning, I used to go on cycle uh, to, for the training institution and come back when I was already in the IAS. But having said all this, now it's impossible to cycle in these uh, cities. So let's find out who are the surviving cyclists uh, in Indian cities. So there are now three types of people who are uh, still on the cycle. One is per force, that is those who have no alternative. So these are the small service providers. Uh, these are people like small vegetable vendors. They are people who sell eggs or bring bread or bring newspapers in the morning. So this is one type of a humble service provider who still survives on his cycle and probably uses it in the early morning, of course. Uh, second is still school children uh, whose schools are not very far away, uh, the, uh, especially going to municipal schools and all, in, including in Pune. They do go on cycle uh, to their uh, schools and back. And the third is the leisure cyclist, which has come up from the West. You know, all the elite people who go out early morning cycling, both as fun and as excess. So these are the three people who are surviving cyclists now. Uh, the last group has come off late uh, because of looking at European interest in cycling and visiting Europe and coming back. Uh, so, uh, so these are the three. Now, the real thing is how do we enhance the first category? Uh, so, and there are lots of people willing to that first and second category, which is the school children going to uh, uh, cycle. So for both of them, safety and continuity is the real issue. So when we plan cycling routes, uh, what we don't understand is we plan them in bits and pieces. There is no continuity and no destination uh, uh, continuity. So even if we provide expensive cycling tracks, the moment there is a break or two breaks, then cyclists can't dismount and get off and then again go because unlike a car driver, he's slower. So he has to be faster on the cycle. So he can't keep getting off the specialized cycle track, wait, get down on the normal road. So then he rather goes in the congested uh, car. So how do we get this continuity? I think this problem is not yet solved. And we talked to a lot of, you know, I remember the Dutch government uh, were also very interested and they did a plan, but they don't like to invest in um, heavy infrastructure. That is, you know, things like cycling underpasses, cycling continuity. But in cities like Pune, Mumbai, that infrastructure is a key still now, I feel. And unless we provide that, cycling for the service providers will not uh, settle in as a routine, uh, much used uh, a business. So this is my first thing that cities which are well off, both Mumbai, Pune, Thane, these three cities are well off financially. Mm -hmm. They invest in flyovers. They invest in underground uh, passages for metros, etc. They should invest in uh, cycle underpasses and uh, bypasses on busy junction so that there is a continuity for the uh, cyclists. Uh, and this can be combined very well with sometimes uh, pedestrian uh, underpasses so that you know you can get uh, both. So this is the this is the heavy investment part. Uh, then the second thing is about uh, making 
point to point cycling which uh, connects to mass public uh, transport mm -hmm. so that's a new category uh, which we haven't yet explored fully mm -hmm. and with all this oyo cycling and you know all these new groups uh, which have come yulu uh, biking and all these types of companies this is a very viable new area and it's a startup area mm -hmm. so what we can do is all the metro local stations heavy bus stop areas uh, which have the, the uh, destination bus stops and the uh, receiving uh, where people passengers mount onto so there to the nearby residential areas which are sometimes not more than 2 3 kilometers away uh, the the higher and park uh, cycling can be very massively promoted i had pushed it a lot and i think new mumbai uh, and thane started it with you uh, do cycling but in mumbai again of course we have got it through now in the general body so mumbai also has a huge opportunity mm -hmm. and as these are at specific times of the year for example they are at uh, early mornings and late evenings so also the streets are a little bit freer you know we have two types of planning for the streets that we need to do one is of course the space planning but the time planning also adds to space so if we can at least get the cyclists some safe time uh, during early mornings when people have to go to office from their home to the uh, metro or the suburban train station and again late evening from the uh, train to their home to these types of higher cycling that also will help a lot and that's a doable thing it's practical it doesn't have the infrastructure problem of too many crossings like longer distance commutes uh, would have so this can be safe so that's like the uh, second area now going back to the school children part that can be very well designed that's something which can be designed very well because we know where the schools are and we know where the catchment area of these uh, children are so and the timings are also quite set so you know you know the morning school timing when they have to go to school and the evening or afternoon school, uh, return timing so if these um, uh, cycle routes can be very strongly policed in terms of safety during the children's uh, going to cycling time and the return times and we have these dedicated lanes so it's not you know generic dedicated lane because generic dedicated lanes are not working in india at all they don't work for buses uh, uh, and BRT, where they're going to work for cyclists. We are far away from that. So just planning them doesn't work. But for school children, when they're going in masses, it can work. I remember when one or two kids had died um, uh, in a, by a bus accident or a truck accident in Pune. Children who used to go by school, uh, by cycle to their school. So that's something which we had tried to do that at least specific hours of the day can be uh, reserved very strongly policed uh, to ensure that there is a cycling safety. So this is the you know uh, for the uh, uh, for the school children now the general uh, uh, cyclist part i think that uh, we haven't thought about areas outside uh, large cities so uh, what's very interesting in india that i'm now coming to leisure cycling because the leisure cycling then carries over very nicely into um, office going cycling yeah. the way i think it all started in europe is that huge long distance leisure cyclists then said that why should we go to office or in our uh, cars so then they all uh, started going by uh, cycling and therefore then they took over the streets uh, just like the car owners have taken over the streets so actually my boss who was in uh, switzerland she used to not like cyclists and she feel there's a chamba he says no cyclists are the most dangerous people she is from sweden if you come in their way they come down and fight with you and they are so they have literally taken over the streets because you dare not cross break a cycle lane get into them or stop them so that's a good thing they have become a strong stakeholder in india they are not a strong, uh, strong stakeholder how do we make them strong stakeholders so this is my point so i used to tell my cycling friends from pune that are we have made cycling lane and then they would keep criticizing there is a tree it doesn't come continuity cars are parked on that's why cars are parked on so you have to throw them out you have to fight no 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 we have to we, we can't uh, do that so the cyclist lobby was not strong enough to ensure that the cycling lanes can be kept aside only for them and the government will not be able to police this forever so how do you make them stronger so this is my last point that we start with the leisure cycling groups uh, which are very good very strong very thoughtful you know mrs birla nirja birla she is a uh, avid cyclist she uh, uh, so many of them uh, are there all of us are there the people who live next to me out here uh, so and they do it early morning when the streets are free but that's not good enough so if we can get the streets outside the big cities the smaller village roads uh, which are not full of traffic and we have this crisscrossing across india 
you know, the cross-country cycling routes on the smaller village roads where you don't have to go on the big national or state highways, but you can reach the same destination going through smaller villages and popularize them. Like, you know, you have this Danube Trail, which we have done so many times. We can uh, cycle from Passau all the way to Vienna and it's a dedicated cycling lane. We may never build a lane like that, but I've discovered, you know, from my own village that as soon as you step off the main state highways, there are these small village roads which have hardly one or two motorcyclists. Even in our congested, dense India, we have these small uh, village roads which are beautiful uh, cycling streets, but nobody knows about them. So if we can get these avid cyclists to get off this for long distance cycling, people go from here to Goa on the highway. That's not fun. If we, if we can map all these side village routes, which can you can read Goa, you can go to Bangalore, now, through these all uh, village routes over 500 kilometers, 800. So this group will become larger. Watching them, villagers will go back to taking uh, to cycling as a hip thing to do because nowadays every villager, moment he can go, he pushes his cycle away and gets off on a motorbike to bring his milk or eggs to the city, which even a few years back they were bringing on the uh, cycle. So that creates a good demonstration effect there. And then these people, when they come to live back in their cities, we can start reclaiming cycle routes in a more uh, activist manner uh, than what we are today. So these are my three points. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. So you are asking all of us to become activist cyclists and reclaim our streets. <laughs> Sure, sir. We'll take your advice. And on that note, I am very happy to also invite uh, Mr. Bhaskar Rao, the Commissioner of Bangalore City Police. Sir, we've read so much about you, about how you've been supporting uh, Cycle Days, Cycle to Work programs, as well as many other initiatives to promote uh, cycling in the city. And uh, just now, Praveen uh, Pradeshi, sir, just spoke about how enforcement is so critical uh, on our streets when we look at cycling and you know, promoting cycling either for our children uh, in the neighborhoods around their cycles, um, or when we look at having dedicated cycle lanes in our cities as well. Because he was just mentioning about how uh, his friends were complaining to him about how cars are parked on our cycle lanes. So let us know, sir, uh, how do you think that we can ensure that, you know, when we want to promote cycling, these proposed infrastructures are actually enforced well. Um, so that's to you, sir. Uh, good afternoon. And sorry for having been late. Um, uh, cycling, as you know, we have been doing very, very aggressively in Bangalore and in Karnataka. We have done discovery of uh, Karnataka, tour of Nilgiris. And then uh, in my erstwhile position as a additional director general of police, uh, Karnataka State Reserve Police, we had women cycle all the time in Belgaum. So it is only a question of dominance. Like... Uh, personal space, office space, family space. Cycle has to come and occupy its space. And cycle is the latest entrant. Though walkers have always been making their entry and exit now and then. So when we are talking about cycling now, with limited road uh, width, limited carriageway width, we are now asking for an entire lane for ourselves when uh, pedestrians don't have a footpath. And now because of public transport promotion, the bus lane uh, is also occupying a lot of attention. So in Bangalore, we have a very, very vibrant cycling group. Satya is our chief. Hello, Satya. <laughs> Satya is our uh, cycle mayor. So mayors are generally addressed as his worshipful mayor. And we call him as his pedalful mayor. <laughs> Satya is our pedalful mayor. And uh, he's doing an excellent job. Last week, Satya and I, uh, along with uh, a very senior officer, Manjula, she is the commissioner of uh, Department of Urban Land Transport. We did a 17-kilometer survey along the outer ring road to ensure that we take some space, one and a half meters, say about uh, five and a half feet space along the on the service road. And uh, as a matter of uh, immediate uh, action, we are going to be fixing. Uh, uh, every 200 meters board saying that this is cycle lane, don't park here. And along the entire 17 kilometer stretch, we will also intend to put every three and a half to four feet red color uh, bollards to earmark. And in some places uh, where junctions are there, we are going to put white markers. So this is going to be a real 
test, first test. Earlier, about 10 years ago, when I was a transport commissioner, I had started it. But uh, as you rightly said, the bigger vehicles came to occupy. So it is nothing but fight for your space. But that particular stretch is full of cyclists. So I'm sure the cyclists are going to retain their space. And um, it will continue to remain a, a cycle uh, lane. And um, going forward, wherever new roads are being planned, uh, this also needs to become a part of it, along with the bus lane, because if you take a cross-section of any major road in any metropolis city, uh, cyclists come to occupy an important position. By virtue of our numbers, if we really promote this, it can become a huge uh, uh, revolution. Cycling can become a revolution. We can overtake uh, any other country in Europe as regards cycling is concerned. And we have been cycling. Cycling is not new to us. Only because in, in the intermittent uh, uh, way, we, we had, there was a two-wheeler, motorized two-wheeler uh, revolution. Now, what I propose is that the 17 kilometers as commissioner of police, I am now passing a magisterial order declaring this to be uh, a cycle lane. And anyone who comes inside inadvertently is likely to be prosecuted by law. So that we want to have some legal muscle as regards the cycle pathway is uh, concerned. Now, apart from that, Bangalore also promotes a lot of cycle-based tourism, cycle-based leisure, cycle-based uh, fitness also over there. So what I had always been telling Satya and uh, other friends that let us now re conf not confine ourselves to only two wheels of a pedal. We can increase it to three wheels and we can also increase to four wheels. Sometime around this year, Satya and I cycled with six others on a pedal bus. And uh, both Satya was also at a wheel and I also, we also took turns. So all six of us were pedaling and it was a four wheel and it was a great fun. And uh, I'm sure if uh, for short distances or uh, commuting within uh, uh, particular corridors, six people are pedaling and one is holding the brakes and the... So such kind of thing, interesting things are also brought out. More number of people will come through. Now, the most important thing is that as uh, Praveen Pardeshi was mentioning about children, now children continue to be a very vulnerable section. So making children come out to cycling is a very, very risky affair unless and until you have a very dedicated pathways uh, for this. So, uh, but in Bangalore, we had identified something what we have called as conservancy lanes, those uh, lanes behind uh, the main roads over there. Of eight to ten conservancy lanes could be joined with schools which are uh, there. These are typically found in South Bangalore. South Bangalore, and uh, we had identified almost close to about a 14 kilometer uh, pathway from uh, Banishankari to National College, Basangudi, uh, not using the cycle in on the main road anywhere. So only the conservancy lane could be used. So these are new ways to explore. And most important is that more power to the cycling community and cycling community has to increase its numbers and cyclists have to be more and more visible. And uh, we should be organizing this. Uh, when I was transport commissioner, along with my minister, we organized, started organizing the cycle day where we closed all the roads and we allowed children, senior citizens and everybody to have. Uh, so probably we need to start once again uh, the same government was there in Parla about 10 years ago when we were doing this. Probably we should sensitize them much more to have cycle days. Satya, why don't we start cycle days again, which we had left long time back? Mm. Still going on, sir. Just uh, so stop for we'll, a little while. So we'll be back on cycle uh, there once again that way. So thank you very much. These are my views. And uh, it is there in implementation. Implementation is the key. So implementation is uh, the most important thing. And um, uh, it, it will not be long before we start cycling once again. And uh, there are a lot of, in, in, in fact, Satya has been felicitating a lot of people like work to cycle to work programs and bringing that Brampton cycle, which is a foldable cycle. So we need such kind of interesting and exciting things that, to happen in the cycling world. Otherwise, asking people just to keep cycling won't be there. We have to bring some amount of, uh, there has to be some excitement around these two wheels and this pedal. Thank you very much. Sure, sir. Sure. Thank you so much. So we will be coming back to both of you all. Uh, thank you so much for all of those uh, measures about how we need to make our cycling very exciting. Uh, we'll definitely think about that one. Um, next, you know, having spoken uh, about 
um, looking at creating all of these cycle tracks, I think an important component that cities do think about is investments. So um, coming to you, Ms. Uh, Swati Khanna, Senior Sector Specialist from uh, KFW. Swati, last uh, year we heard that Germany is going to spend about 1 billion euros uh, <coughs> over five years for green mobility projects in India. So what can our cities expect from you for the cycling projects that they would uh, plan going ahead in their cities? Over to you, Swati. Uh, thanks, Aswati. Uh, it's indeed a pleasure to be here in the seminar being organized by ITDP, World Bank, GIZ, and the Smart Cities Mission. And it's a perfect opportunity for us to actually disseminate the information of this Green Urban Mobility Partnership that you mentioned. So this Green Urban Mobility Partnership is under the Indo-German Development Cooperation between the Government of Germany and Government of India. Uh, the partnership is with Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, which also houses the urban transport wing and also the Smart Cities mission. So this whole partnership is uh, to the tune of 1 billion euros, that's roughly 8,000 crores, and uh, is intended to cover non-motorized transport, first and last mile connectivity, intermediate public transport, public place making, buses not to be forgotten, uh, all the modes which, which have the maximum outreach in a city. But having said that, there is an abundance of investment through this partnership. And also uh, with Mr. Puri's, the minister's uh, speech statement in the beginning, it's, it's really overwhelming to see at the top level, there is support for bicycling. Otherwise we have always heard that you know, we need political support. There is no support from the governments. Nobody wants to invest in cycling infrastructure. And I hope the words that the minister has said today, the government of India and also the state governments, you know, uh, match up to it in terms of approving the projects, in terms of providing funds for the project. So under this partnership together with KFW Development Bank, which is a financial arm of the cooperation together with GIZ, which is a technical arm of the cooperation, uh, there is an investment finance which is available to the tune of 8,000 crores. But not only the investment finance, also the technical assistance as well as grant for these projects is available through both the institutions. Um, in fact, we had been uh, preparing some projects in Hyderabad towards some bicycling uh, together with the metro. Uh, the Kochi water metro project that KFW is financing that also has a lot of intermodality and uh, multimodal integration components, which is not just ferries, but also, you know, uh, the extension into bicycling lanes, walkways, etc. So there's, you know, uh, access to the ferries is, uh, is feasible. That's also our intent in Nagpur, where we are together with AFD financing the metro. But having said that, uh, I would be very frank and open to say that whenever we are discussing cycling projects or uh, walk walkway projects with a lot of cities, sure. there is, at times we see, uh, you know, there's a hesitation to really invest in that because although, uh, Bicycling and walking is the least investment mobility projects globally. You hardly need any investments when you compare it to metros or when you compare it to even buses. The investments, CAPEX investment is really low, but the returns are also not there. So I think there needs to be a mindset shift, which, is, which was overwhelming to uh, uh, listen from Bangalore as well as uh, Mr. Bhaskar and as well as Mr. Pardeshi from Maharashtra. So uh, I hope that going forward when we approach the states or cities, in fact, it's not, uh, it's not required that we approach the same, all the cities and all the states, all the urban local bodies, SPVs, smart city SPVs, all the states are more than welcome. There is no set criteria on who can you know, benefit from the partnership. They are more than welcome to approach Mahua, to approach uh, KFW for assistance in implementation of such projects. That's fantastic, sure. Yes. Uh, but apart from that, as I mentioned initially, political acceptance is really critical. Political push and encouragement is really critical. Another issue which needs to be looked into, which 
seems to be working well with uh, Bangalore is institutional responsibilities, in the, uh, you know, uh, a good exchange between multiple players and also uh, other modes of transport, for example, metros or buses, the institutions and the organizations when they work on such projects, they also look into how people actually reach the bus stops, how people actually reach the metro stations. We are currently discussing a project with MMRDA for mm -hmm. metros. And uh, we were really pleased when MMRDA proposed that they want to do an integrated project, not just the metro, a plain vanilla metro, sure. but also multimodal integration across the whole line, sure. which was interesting for us. And that's why we went for it. Yes. So that was really nice. Uh, the funds are available and sure. everyone, all the cities and uh, institutions are more than welcome. And since Mr. Padeshi is here on the video as well, uh, so I was really happy when I saw one of the government orders from government of Maharashtra, especially for this unlock 1.0, wherein the state suggested to adopt cycling, which is a automatic mode for maintaining social distancing, not to touch anyone <laughs> and pretty affordable, pretty inclusive. It's, it's really nice. Even the PM's words of Atma Nirbhar, I feel bicycling and walking, maybe bicycling after walking is the, is the most self-reliant mode and most climate friendly, et cetera. So I hope Maharashtra continues this encouragement for bicycling beyond the COVID crisis as well. Thank you, Swati. Thank you so much. And you actually would put a very, very strong point. Like Maharashtra has, uh, you know, has been one of those pioneers who yeah. actually went ahead and said that, you know, cities should use walking and cycling. And in fact, for shopping, you have to use walking and cycling and no motorized transport would be allowed as well. That was fantastic. And uh, sir, actually uh, coming back to you on that one uh, front, uh, I'm sure you must be busy and you may want to step out as well. Uh, sir, the thing is that you, you spoke about how Mumbai and Pune were uh, some of the more richer cities and they have access to funds. But what about all the other uh, cities? Uh, so like, what are your thoughts on the remaining um, uh, cities of Maharashtra and how can you as the urban development secretary maybe promote these cities uh, to encourage walking, uh, encourage cycling, um, especially now under COVID situation where our public transportation is not going to be able to function in its complete full sense as it functioned in the past where uh, you know, cities across the world are promoting cycling as uh, as an option um, as well um, so do you think that a state policy might be a great idea what are your thoughts sir uh, very quickly coming to you once again uh, i mean uh, you're absolutely right that uh, covid uh, like any other crisis offers an opportunity which is bigger than the crisis and the opportunities are bigger so this is just one of the uh, many opportunities which the COVID crisis offers that we use cycling, which is a more ca a carbon uh, neutral mode of transport and more health, uh, healthy also. Uh, so that, yeah, we can do that. We can promote it as a policy. But again and again, I'm trying to let everybody, I saw one of the questions on, um, you know, on the thing, I was just typing out an answer to them. But anyway, I might as well say it now. See, I discovered it the hard way. So this is not something which I know as an answer, as a, uh, as a, understood answer because for two years i struggled a lot as municipal commissioner of pune to make cycling and those were i mean so many years back so I was much younger and I had a more uh, let's say zeal to really make it happen i would go cycling to my office uh, once a week and i got my standing committee chairman also and without any car in front or behind you know the usual fashion which all of us not that way just go in a complete uh, uh, unknown way and of course uh, so the a real issue for uh, cycling is cyclists themselves. I, I gave you the example of um, Margareta Wallström, she is the, the lady, that cyclists in Europe are very ferocious people. You try to come in the way of an actual cyclist by crossing them, you will do it. What car owners are here, what happens when suppose you have a, a road and then suddenly, uh, let's say, you earmark a part of the road as a bus lane. How all the car owners come up fighting, the corporate shouts, the MLA shout, and all that, they don't know. 
you when you make a pedestrian crossover a large pedestrian crossover by uh, stopping and making a pedestrian island again the car owners start shouting so they are a very organized group and they are naturally represented i am again and again saying that no amount of incentives will work unless cyclists become this active group which pushes both political leaders and administrators to do it then the rest will follow so that's my first point policies regulations help it helps us to just say that we have done this doesn't happen on the ground it happens on the ground when people who are cycling take it up and how do we increase this numbers because that number is going down pune until 20 years ago was a cycling city everybody went everywhere on cycle in pune up till very recently so in my own uh, sort of uh, experience lifetime i have seen it from a cycling city change to completely uh, cycling unfriendly city in just 20 years so how did this happen this happened because cyclists became a smaller and a weaker stakeholder how do you become a more stronger stakeholder state policies can help students cycling to uh, that's very good covid as a means uh, uh, to push people to travel alone so that they are not in touch with each other that could be other thing but public investment in ensuring that cycling crossovers uh, across busy streets busy crossings are safe crossovers so that continuity of speed for a cyclist is maintainable that's so critical if if that sort of a thing can be made like how we think about a car moment there is a congestion point we plan one flyover then we plan a second flyover on on top of it and each flyover costs 100 crores and 500 crores we are not talking about 100 and 500 crores for a city like mumbai maybe 200 crores or 300 crores is all that we need to get all this thing pune it could be about 100 crores to make it so why start with these rich cities because if we can show it that it works flawlessly here then all the smaller towns will make it happen without needing to make these types of big investment because fortunately they are not that congested so that's like uh, i think uh, my way of uh, saying that and another thing that it companies uh, they are already doing it in their closed campuses uh, institutions like iit iit is already doing it you know everybody cycles to uh, from one hostel to their thing in iit mumbai and big uh, uh, complexes of uh, it companies also do it so how can we help these it companies to make it from inside their campus to at least up to the metro station so mm-hmm. i'm making that line so that's like a small incremental first step so mm-hmm. i would focus on this much to happen in the next 2 to 3 years and I, i just want to repeat that the really big payoff what i think police commissioner bangalore was saying the big payoff is in the large road network india has outside the uh, highways and outside the main cities because once cycling becomes popular on those side streets then it's very easy to take over uh, the uh, the congested cities today that we don't have the numbers we don't have the numbers in the right groups uh, so, so that's where sure sir i've been hearing both you and police commissioner saying very loudly that we're calling out to all the cyclists to become very dominant uh, in our cities and actually seize their space uh, we really look forward to collaborating with you sir in the future to make sure that maharashtra is a cycling friendly city under your leadership now coming very quickly uh, to both antonella and uh, satya um so antonella um i'd like to come to you with the question that uh, this is a question from one of our registrants and uh, he or she was asking that is cycling actually feasible commute option in cases of a uh, extreme weather condition so we know that it rains heavily in milan the temperature goes down to 3 degrees celsius of course it's not extremely hot but uh, you know what are your thoughts about this particular um, uh, message and what are the measures that milan must be taking to ensure that cycling is comfortable okay uh, thank you um actually um i don't have the car uh, since long time and i'm using bikes just to to move and to to work and uh, uh, i'm quite i'm not for sure the, the only one and there is a lot of people uh, that can uh, y- use the, the the bike but uh, it must be said that uh, uh, first uh, milano is a small uh, small town small city in terms of surface um a lot must be uh, done in terms of uh, improving the uh, over, um, overcome the fragmentation of the uh, uh, the, the bike lanes uh, so uh, investment must be uh, put on uh, on this on this and uh, the, the the most the most important uh, issue is uh, 
how to uh, connect, uh, how to give the possibility to the people uh, working and living outside the, 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 not only the city center of Milan, but the municipality of Milan to commute and to use uh, the, uh, the, 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 the bicycle in order to, for a uh, work reason. Uh, so uh, intermodality has to be uh, improved. Uh, it has been uh, uh, quoted, but I think this is really Really important and also the over overcome the, the fragmentation of the uh, no, the network uh, um, I think that uh, um, Milano is in the right direction but much more can be done uh, in order to uh, improve but also uh, no, um, several times has been said uh, that uh, a mindset shift uh, is necessary and I I fully agree uh, and moreover, moreover is uh, also fully agree in terms of uh, uh, political involvement and uh, investment, because it is true that uh, now, especially with the, the push uh, given by the, uh, also the, the sanitary emergency, um, a lot of people and more people are using the bike, but uh, there is still uh, um, a sort of uh, um, inertia, no? a sort of resistance to, to use the, the bike. So I think that uh, a lot uh, can be, done in this sure. direction. Sure. Thank you so much, Antonella. Those are very, very critical points. Now, um, as we're closing uh, closer to uh, 4.30, Satya, coming to you. Um, there was a registrant who actually asked if, as resident welfare groups and local stakeholders, uh, how can we ensure that we promote cycling in the local neighborhood? And also, you know, you seem to be working extremely well with uh, the Polis Commissioner, we heard uh, Mr. Bhaskar Rao's remarks as well. So what would be your advice to these local CSOs who want to collaborate with government and take this discussion forward? Over to you, Satya. I don't, I don't think anything stops them. It's just conceptualizing how do you want to do that and how do you ensure people in the neighborhood take their bike out for short trips, uh, at least for their grocery shopping and things like that, if, if not for commute. You need to be able to create events like Cycle Day and Open Streets that you said. It's important to use that as a medium of getting people together and communicating what you want. And there should be a sustained follow-up of understanding uh, on a continuous basis. How are people doing? You know, you could use the uh, the open streets itself as an example to collect that data and sure. encourage them. There is no shortcut to people involvement. You sure. need to take the first step of using events, create sure. events in your local community that can bring cyclists together and sure. then talk to them. I sure. think that is the that is the most useful part. There are templates available. You can reach out to any of us. Cycle Day is a sure. template. You guys have done that in yeah. Chennai. There are people yes. who have done it in Gurgram. There are enough templates. Please reach out and uh, ask for those and then try and do them in your neighborhood. Yes. As, as you rightly said, Satya, we all of us do have templates and if yeah, people are interested in reaching out to ITDP or the bike mayors, please go ahead and reach out to us. You can mail us and we'll definitely help you on you know, how can you actually kickstart these events in your neighborhood. Um, since we're running out of time, the last question sir, uh, to Mr. Bhaskar Rao, sir. So um, when we think about, uh, you know, creating these um, cycle lanes and cycle tracks, and when we do talk to um, the local police officers, most of, often the traffic police officers are interested in motorized uh, traffic. They don't seem to be, you know, sometimes understanding pedestrians or cyclists as, uh, as traffic. Uh, so, sir, what is your advice to us to sort of, you know, break that, um, break that, uh, uh, break this particular issue so that we can connect to our police officers and uh, ensure that they embrace all of these different users equally. What is your advice, sir? Over to you. The police officers normally cater to the uh, ones who create maximum trouble for them or the problem for them. So they don't consider cyclists anywhere to be a force at all. So that's what I'm inviting cyclists to become a dominant force so that police officers start listening to cyclists. And uh, as Andrea pointed out, you need political uh, support. So I've been telling Satya that this is not something which we should restrict to ourselves or to the IT group. I am now planning to get corporators and MLAs to come and cycle here so that it, they start owning it. The moment I start owning or if Satya starts owning, it will be demolished the way we, the day we lose, uh, the day we vacate these chairs. So when the politicians start uh, owning this idea, people start owning this idea. I mean, so there's a lot of positive with positivity. 
so cycling has to become a very uh, positive uh, idea of the elected representatives so in uh, days to come in fact uh, earlier also we had uh, asked our home minister and urban transport urban development minister to come and cycle so if we start doing it more and more it is possible then coming to traffic police see traffic police wants the road to get cleared and traffic to keep moving over there some of they felt that cyclists will be slow but cyclists are not slow but in a city like bangalore say cyclists cycling is faster than uh, commuting by road so now all attention is in bangalore is on lanes you have a cycle lane you have a walking lane and you have a uh, bus lane so it is all lanes and lanes now and uh, hopefully the planning also is moving uh, in that direction because the bureaucracy also is got uh, sensitized uh, as regards uh, cycling is concerned that's why senior is officer was also a part of our team and then uh, in the bangalore city brihad bangalore mahanagar palike they set out a separate budget for cycle lanes so good things are going to be coming ahead and uh, what i also propose and we discussed with satya is that to get more cycle dealers and cycle uh, the manufacturers on board to become part of the cycling movement because everybody who has to be a part of it will see their personal interest how am i going to benefit out of the whole thing so we have to create those areas for their personal benefit or their institutional benefit or their professional benefit or the way their uh, income is going to get increased so definitely the, uh, the cycle owner we are now come up with the help of this fkcci we are now preparing a list of those people who are in the business of selling cycles over there so they would like to see more and more cycles sold so yeah. definitely they'll be a part of this moment so they'll be part of the cycle day they'll be part of uh, small children cycling and they'll be part of safe cycling also over there so when the trading community and the political community is with us the day is not very far when our strength and our domination and our uh, we and we being noticed is not far away Thank fantastic you. sir fantastic thank you so much uh, those were uh, wonderful uh, closing remarks and i'd just like to ask uh, all the other um, uh, speakers and panelists like if they'd like to have one line uh, to sort of close our uh, session um, antonella to you uh now i i just want to thank you for the opportunity to discuss with you uh, because i think that there are uh, many things that are on the same line so um, between uh, india and also europe uh, even if uh, not despite the differences and uh, i really hope you can uh, uh, apply no? all the things that we are just discussing sure, so, sure. this is so just uh, my uh, wish so thank you, thank thank you, you again Angela. swati over to you next uh, you know you've spoken about the great investments that we can uh, look forward to what are your uh, last closing comments yeah swati so even though i come from the kfw development bank i am personally a big advocate for bicycling so although the funds are available and the cities and states and uh, spvs are more than welcome and invited with their concepts and projects on how to do it on a larger scale not just pilots like chennai has launched its mega streets program complete streets program uh but i uh, the 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 light i saw in the lockdown period was the birds i view of, you know from the drones of the city and i could see the huge roads not just in terms of networks as mr pradesh you mentioned but also in terms of bits mumbai kerala bangalore delhi i mean it was it was fantastic it it gave me goosebumps one or two yeah. photographs so space is this is definitely not an issue yeah. it's our will yeah. and for us cyclists to take a position and stand and ask for cycling as a right sure. and uh, yeah Thank fantastic you. Thank you, Swati. Have a nice bicycling. Have a nice day bicycling in the evening, hopefully. <laughs> sure, sure. Thank you, Swati. So, um, to you, uh, Mr. Parveen Pardeshi. So, what are your last remarks on this World Cycling Day uh, to inspire our cities to cycle? Over to you, sir. Uh, for uh, cycling, you know, I, I always feel that cycling is the one thing which is midway between flying and walking. <laughs> you have the same joy of. 
looking at the world from a perspective from top down but you are not so slow as walking so you see the world passing by you reasonably fast but still in detail so that, that's why it's so uplifting so that's about uh, cycling but how do we really uh, make it happen in india i think all whatever glib talks we do it's still a huge huge uh, struggle and cities is going to remain a struggle for a, a long time because of the way in which private vehicles have taken over the uh, space and they are not going to uh, vacate that space for a huge time now so uh, one of course is uh, cyclists to organize themselves and to take back a lot of the uh, routine tasks uh, through uh, cycling so that's one thing and secondly i i, I would like to mention because i saw a lot of questions that we have one very powerful instrument which is uh, the development plan so when we may, the development plan is a mandatory legal document which lays out how the streets the usage of public open spaces uh, that so in that uh, definitely we can mandate the use of cycle lanes Uh, as a part of a legal instrument for the planning of the city more powerfully than that we have been doing of course the enforcement is always an issue but still at least the legal mandate of cycling lanes already for example in pune all the brt lanes the bus rapid transport lanes have by law a legal uh, cycling lane uh, by the side so same thing we can do on many other streets so that's the main thing i think the police commissioner in bangalore can have his last uh, word yes sure sir sure Are you please go ahead, sir. We are listening to you. Under, under. Police, sir. I'm. 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 Thank you. That's it, sir. मेरे पास आया nothing else to say. Only thing is that practice. Come on the field. चर्चा काफी हो चुकी है. अब कुछ काम करने का वक्त आ गया है बस दैट्स ऑल. Awesome, sir. Awesome. That's yeah. fantastic. And Satya, like uh, uh, a last few words from your end. The the oh, time is now. I don't. <laughs> no, the time is now. You can see the excitement. You can see that the time has come. I think we should leverage this opportunity and go all out and make it happen, both on the infrastructure side and getting people on the road. Sure. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, all of you, uh, speakers, panelists, and all our participants for taking time out of your busy schedules uh, to join us on uh, Urban Log. Uh, as Sir said, charcha kafi ho gaya hai. Abhi kam karne ke liye time ho gaya hai. So uh, you know, when we come to a close of uh, this particular session, I'd actually just like to take a few moments of uh, seriousness to bring back to your notice that cycling is fantastic. It is fantastic for social and equity benefits and uh, economic uh, recovery as well as health benefits so like we started that 70% of trips in indian cities are actually by green modes and by encouraging cycling we will be bringing these social heroes to the forefront where they'll have equal access as any uh, one else to education jobs healthcare and recreation simultaneously as mr kunal kumar mentioned right at the beginning of this particular conversation that this transformation will boost our economy studies show that cycle and pedestrian friendly infrastructure create 46% more jobs than road projects built strictly for cars Investments in cycling infrastructure, as uh, was mentioned earlier, has economic benefits of up to five times the initial investment, and an annual benefit. Um, um, and you know, also cycling for short distances can actually result in an annual benefit of USD twenty-three billion to the Indian economy. So, finally, it's also that cycling and walking will have multiple health benefits, uh, where we can result from better. physical and mental well being as well as it also leads to an in improved and boosted immunity with so many wonderful benefits we at itdp india are excited to support the smart cities mission the cities of our um, uh, of, uh, of our country work with different um, Uh, state development authorities such as uh, the maharashtra state level uh, authority as well as um, karnataka as well to promote um cycling in igniting a cycling transformation within our country let's do uh, this together now before i close i would like to thank the smart cities mission once again and their entire team for an amazing collaboration i would also like to thank the world bank and giz smart sut for their fantastic partnership last but not the least all of what we've done here uh, would not have been possible if we didn't have a great team behind us 
supporting us every day. I'd like to thank Aditi, Bala, Achutin, Parin, and Santosh, who worked uh, on the research for the presentation that I put together on embracing a cycling transformation. And Urban Log itself would not have been possible without the support of our dedicated team at ITDP India, held together by Archana and Venu, supported by Shiva, Kavin, Aishwarya, Shrishti, Keshav, and Aditi. And of course, with the mentoring from Shreya. In gratitude, always thanking you so much. Over to you, Ashita. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ashwati. Thank you so much, esteemed speakers, panelists, and participants for joining us today. Before you leave, could you, uh, please take a few seconds to fill these questions on your screen. I'm starting the poll right now. This is a direct feedback that you give us for this episode. So would love to hear from you. And just waiting for everybody. Yes, I can see all of you have started uh, responding. Thank you so much for that. Um, these feedback, this feedback here will help us make our episodes going forward better for you and for everybody here. Our next episode is on the 10th of June and the topic is investments for green recovery in the transport sector. The registration link is in the uh, for the webinar is shared in the chat box and if you leave the meeting you get a post attendee url you will find the the registration link there as well we'll be sending you more information about speakers and sh uh, panelists shortly via email and whatsapp so stay tuned and stay safe have a great day everyone and happy world bicycle day to everyone here i'll stay online while all of you finish um, answering this question and logging off so i'll be online till all of you leave. Happy World Cycle Day to everyone once again. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.